Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I'm playing around with a, what I call an intimate city scene. These are little places in a city where you just find a neat little spot and maybe there's a person there just doing something. Kind of like street photography, but not like, you know, in their face kind of uh, street photography. I just call it an intimate city scene. Let me show you an example. Here's one. Uh, there's this place, Shakespeare and Company in Paris. That's just a fantastically neat looking, cute is the word that comes to mind, um, a little bookstore. Anyway, this guy was standing there looking in the window and I was kind of taking photos of the place. So this is kind of what I mean by that. But there's some things I need to do to this photo to fix it. The first is I want to change the aspect ratio. This was shot with an Olympus camera, which is a uh, micro four thirds. I want to crop this to a uh, two by three aspect ratio. So maybe something about like that. I'm actually going to pull that back a little bit. And I also want to adjust the verticals. I love that in Luminar. And now that I've done that, I need to pull this back a little bit this way because I want to make sure I don't lose track of the bottom of this little sign that's sitting out there. So I think that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and close that. But one thing I notice is on this left-hand side, especially, it looks a little bit bent. So that's where I come down here to optics. And I'm going to get this lens distortion. I'm just going to drag that to the right a little bit. I think like a 33, that looks about right. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and go back up here and start editing. So just to kind of get my frame or my canvas in place, I went from that to that. Straighten the verticals, cropped it a little bit, fixed a little distortion. Now I'm good to go. And if you've seen a number of my videos, you've probably heard me say that when I have a really dark image, sometimes I will start with Enhance AI instead of the light tool. This is one of those times. I'm going to go ahead and just drag that to about a 52. As you can see there, much better visibility into the photo. And now I feel like I can kind of start having fun and editing. So I've got that done. Now I'm going to go over to the light tool and make some adjustments. Now, the first thing I do in situations like this is a lot of these store lights and street lights and things like that in cities come off really yellow. And sometimes they just are yellow. I just kind of prefer cooler temperatures. So I'm actually going to pull this down like a negative 30, 31, something about like that, just to cool that uh, tone overall, cool that off a little bit. I'm going to add a little smart contrast. So, you know, like 25 or something. Highlights are going to come down just a tad, you know, 35, 36 but I am gonna bump shadows about 24, 25. Now you can see we've gone from that to that. So I feel like we're getting there. Still a few things I want to do. The next tool is gonna to be Structure AI. And I'm gonna go you know, fairly kind of in the middle here, maybe 55, 56, something like that. Because it's a city scene and there's a number of things that have detail, I think Structure AI works great there. But what I wanna do is apply it with a radial mask because I don't want it to apply across the entire photo. I just wanna put it in certain areas. So now I need to adjust the orientation and the size of this thing and all that. So I just kinda of mess around with radial mask here and need to expand that. It's really the center of the photo that I most care about showing that structure in. So something about like that. And notice I use this right-hand side one, whereas the left-hand side one is gonna apply the uh, AI structure outside the circle. This right-hand one is gonna apply it inside the circle. So if I hit the forward slash, you can see what the mask looks like. Anywhere where it's red is basically where that AI structure is gonna be applied. So there you go, I've got it where I want it. And I'm gonna use that mask again. So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna say copy so that I can have that mask kind of on my clipboard ready to apply to another filter. Okay, and next up is details. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is add small details of about a 20 or so, medium, uh, like mid 30s. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of sharpening as well. All I'm trying to do is crunch up some of that center area. And you guessed it, this is where I'm gonna paste the mask that I'd previously used. There we go, so now that's applying in that core center area. If I click here to show mask, you can see it's the same mask as I had on structure. So I've kind of doubled up on that kind of look for lack of a better word, because I want a little bit of crispy there and I don't want the crispy everywhere else. And I'm gonna do something else to adjust that here in a minute. So I've got that kind of looking the way I want it to look. I am gonna add a little bit of golden hour. So this is gonna kind of pop that warmer tone coming out from the inside of the bookstore. So when I turn this off, you can see there's there's quite a bit of yellow kind of inside the store, like the wall and the bookshelves and looks like beams in the ceiling. And just doing that is gonna give it a little bit more pop. Also this golden color on the name there and then the yellow on that sign in the background. It all is just kind of popping a little bit, which is why I used golden hour here. 
And now that I've done all that, I want to go do a little something uh, to that outer, uh, the outside of that radial mask that I created. So I'm going to go to local mask. I'm going to click on basic. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cool it off. So I'm going to do like a negative 45 or something like that. I am going to take the exposure down uh, a fair amount. So I'm going to mask this in. So it's affecting the whole photo right now, but it won't forever. I'm going to go negative on AI structure. And I'm actually going to take the saturation down a bit as well. And then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to paste the mask. Uh, but this time I want it the opposite. So I'm going to click invert. So now I've taken that same mask that I used on some of the core tools on the essentials uh, section of you know, your global masking, and I pay, uh, copy and paste that mask into a local mask. And then once I did that, I inverted it because I want to cover the outside, not that inside. So in other words, I just want to impact that stuff that's in red, which is the opposite of what I was impacting earlier with the details and the structure. So let me go ahead and hit my forward slash key to hide that. And let me turn this off. So if you look at this, that outside area that's being affected, there it is without it. And there it is with that back on. So what I've done, if you can look here, I've cooled it off, right? So made it a little bit cooler, which is kind of darker, kind of goes with nighttime. I've dropped the exposure. In other words, I made it darker. I took structure down. In other words, I removed kind of that crunchiness. I've softened up that edge a little bit. And then I also removed saturation. I could also pull down vibrance. I could, I could kind of do whatever with these tools here. Maybe I could pull down shadows, make it a tiny bit darker as well. In addition to that exposure, maybe add a little bit of contrast. You can see kind of what that's doing. In some way, I'm kind of creating like a, a little bit of a vignette around this photo. But really the point here is that what I'm trying to do is remove detail, remove color, remove warmth, remove light so that you're not distracted by any elements out there. I want you to focus on that core center part of the photo, which I think your eye is going to be drawn to anyway. You've got a sign there. You've got a door. You've got a sign across. You've got a gentleman. Uh, you got that bookshelf. It's all kind of coming together to me kind of around that gentleman, and he's looking into the store. So I think you're naturally drawn there into anyway, but remove detail, remove color, remove light. You're going to have less of a wandering eye because you know, you're naturally, your eye is going to be drawn to stuff that's bright and colorful uh, and detailed. So if I take all that away, you're less likely to be drawn there. So if I turn this off, you can see that outer edge is a little bit brighter, all that kind of stuff. And then when I turn it back on, you can see how it's gotten darker and softer and all that. So that's a way to help draw attention is by remove distractions on the outer edges, which I'm doing here to kind of create a little bit more intimacy in the scene. And the last thing would just be a vignette. And even though I just kind of made a vignette with that local mask, I'm still going to come in here and add a little bit more of a vignette uh, just to kind of tighten that up a little bit. I'm not going to like overdo it, but you know, maybe a little bit like that. And then of course, I like to use inner light because it really pops that center of the photo. And you can see what's happening there. It's creating a little bit more of the light that's, you know, there's apparently, you can see the upper upper left side here. You can see that there's uh, this light here, but it obviously uh, continues behind this, uh, this overhang. And it's more of that light that I'm creating coming down on that guy. And again, creating a little bit more focal area in the center of the photo around that gentleman. So if I turn this off, you can see without the vignette, you know, it's not a massive difference, but turn it back on a little bit brighter in the center, a little bit darker on the edges. That's what a vignette does. But that inner light, I think, really helps. And you can obviously adjust this. I might pull that down a little bit. I don't want to overdo it. Maybe something about like that. But that's my scene. That's how I basically craft it and try to direct the viewer's eye to this, what I call an intimate city scene or something like that. It's not really a name for it, I don't guess. But if you look at my before and after, that's how my photo started. That's how my photo is now. And if I do this sliding window, you can kind of see how much of an impact we've had on the photo. It's pretty simple, basic moves, just controlling the light and the detail and the color. Same stuff you really control in every photo. Helps me really focus the attention on what I want to focus on and create a little bit more intimacy in the scene. And I also think it's kind of interesting. I don't know if you noticed this, but if you look here, there's this uh, lady inside and it almost looks like that guy is looking through the window toward her and she's kind of looking toward him. I don't know. And there's also this face of this lady over here who seems to be looking out, uh, you know, somewhere else across the bookstore. Just these little scenes. I, I'm fascinated by these kind of things. I love this kind of, you know, street photography. I don't know if you really call it street photography, but intimate city scene. That's how I edited this one. Hope it gives you some ideas. Hope you're having fun. Hope you're staying safe. Take care of yourselves out there, my friends, and uh, come back soon. I'll be back with more videos. Thanks for watching. Have fun editing, my friends, and adios.